Thanks so much for joining us today. Our hope and prayer is that God will use this message powerfully in your life and that it'll bring you closer to Him. If you'd like more information about our church or if you'd like to hear more messages, you can visit vibechurch.com or download our app. Now get ready to receive a word from the Lord. Good morning. How you guys doing? I'm Rainer Rojas. I'm one of the pastors in La Viña in Costa Rica. And like Randy was saying, we know each other right for a long time now. I think eight years, something like that. They came for uh, a mission trip, an exploratory trip, and uh, they stayed for the coffee. So coffee is also <laughs> an unspoken value there in Costa Rica, especially in our church. We love coffee. We have really great coffee. So you're all invited to come to Costa Rica and have a cup with us. So anyway, Happy New Year to everybody. We are so excited for you to be here. And uh, I really feel at home when I come to Vive Church and... Uh, some of you don't know this, but my wife is from Blythewood here in, around the corner. And uh, every time we come to South Carolina, this is where we come. And uh, that's how we met this church in 2015 when we were living here for a, for a season. So anyhow, Happy New Year. This is a transition sermon in between series. And uh, Randy closed the gifts exchange series last week with an amazing message. One of the things that he mentioned was that heaven is not full of forgiven, of, of good people. It's full of forgiven people. And he went on saying that salvation and forgiveness are a gift that we cannot buy, that we cannot earn. It's something that the only thing we can do with this gift is to receive it. And my favorite quote from last week was that God's grace doesn't give us the, an excuse to stay the same. God's grace... Gives us the power to never be the same. And guys, this is a call for transformation. This is a call for change. And this means that we need to be made new. We need to be a new creation. You know, when you and I come to God with our broken lives, He transforms us into a new creation. And maybe you're starting the year and you feel broken inside. Maybe you're still dealing with some of the garbage and some of the load that you were carrying during the whole year of 2019. Maybe you just came out of a traumatic event. You lost someone. You've been hurt. You're struggling financially. You have a bad habit that you know you need to quit, but you haven't been able to do it. Maybe you're dealing with some sin in your life. Even with all of that, the Bible tells us that we can approach God with confidence. Because He's not ashamed of you. He's not mad at you. He loves you. He wants for you to run back home. He wants for you to run back to His arms. He wants to show you transformation. He wants to give you a clear vision of what your life can be if you include Him in all of your plans. So this is the first Sunday of 2020, and I know that probably most of us already have some resolutions and new goals for this year. And this is great, because God is a God of new beginnings. God is a God of change. In fact, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, it's a new creation. The old is gone, and the new is here. This is incredible. Most of 2019 was uh, very busy for us down in Costa Rica. We spent most of the year planting a new church out of our local church in Palmares, 20 minutes uh, in, in a different town called San Ramon. And um, we work on planting this church most of the year, and it was finally launched in November 10th, just over a month ago. And it was a great experience. We invest a lot of time uh, Raising leaders and raising different programs and approaching the community to be able to reach out to those in need. And one of the programs that we started um, to be able to reach more people for this new church was after school programs. Because there's a lot of need with the kids and, and youth of that community. And so we have a lot of really cool after school, program, after school programs in, in this new church. And one of the programs is a butterfly garden. 
And oftentimes when we talk about transformation and we want to find a good example in nature for transformation, for change, we think about butterflies. We've been using this analogy to teach kids about how their lives can be changed forever, that they don't need to stay the same. We've been using this analogy with the butterflies to teach adults that are desperate for a change in their lives, that God can make a transformation in them. And all of that is good. It's a great analogy. But who knew that we only had part of the story? I always thought that this transformation was the equivalent of human puberty. But instead of changing boys and getting a mustache and a face full of seeds, the caterpillar somehow grew antennas and wings. But this is not what happened. A couple months ago, some ecosystem and botanic guys from the University of Costa Rica came to our church to teach, teach, us about, um, teach some workshops about butterflies. And they explained to us that not only caterpillars become butterflies, but not all of them do. And, and they explained to us that, that, most, that these caterpillars have to choose to go into the cocoon. They don't go into the cocoon just by instinct. It's something they have to decide to do. And they only have a very small window of time to get it done before their bodies lose the ability to change. Some of them put off building the cocoon for so long that they miss their window of time. Their window for change and they die without ever becoming a butterfly. Doesn't that sound familiar? Well, they also explain what happens inside of this cocoon. And I don't know about you, but I thought the little caterpillar inside of that wrapping was just changing. You know, it was growing wings and growing antennas. But no. They explain to us that once they go into this cocoon, they are completely disintegrated to its very essence. If you open a cocoon... You don't find a half-breed creature, half caterpillar, half butterfly. All you find is a slimy liquid. The caterpillar is disintegrated to nothing. The ca caterpillar is not transformed. It is made new. And from that liquid, he's reborn, created again. Into a magnificent creature. Isn't this amazing? But the caterpillar has to be willing to die. Willing to die to its own nature. It has to be willing to be crunched and reduced to nothing to have this resurrection miracle in their lives. So the bottom line here, people, is that Without death, there is no resurrection. If, there's, if you want resurrection in your life, you have to be willing to die. And look how Paul explains this in the letter to the Roman church. In Romans 6, verse 3 through 8. It says, we are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism in death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin may not live any longer. That we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. This is amazing. This is a beautiful verse. And you know what? When a butterfly emerges from this cocoon, it's a new beginning. It's a new creation. It's no change. The caterpillar is completely 
made new. It's a new beginning. It cannot be the same as before. It doesn't matter what the butterfly does from here on. It will never be a caterpillar again. Things are going to change for this creature. The places that this creature used to to go to are going to change. The pleasures, the things that bring pleasure to this creature are going to change. They're not going to be the same anymore. And the perspective is going to change. Because it's not going to crawl on the ground anymore. It's going to fly. And one thing is for sure. All of us at some point want to start over. We wish we could start from scratch something new. Maybe we go back in time and change the past. And you know what? It happens to all of us. We regret some of the things we do. Some of the things we say. Decisions we made in the past. And we wish we could go back and do it all over again and do it differently. If you talk to some of the older people, they'll tell you, Oh, if I could only be young again. If I could only be your age again. If I can only repeat my life, I would do so many things differently. And sadly, lots of, lots of people live full of regrets. See, things that they regret having done and all the things that they regret not having the courage to do when they had the chance to do it. The bad news, people, is that we cannot go back and change the past. That's impossible. But the good news is that the present is a new beginning. And your future is, if you include God in it, is full of hope. But isn't it true that it happens to all of us? It happens to all of us. We tend to hold on to the past and look back instead of looking forward. We spend more time thinking about our past glories, our past pain, instead of looking forward. And our past becomes an anchor in our lives. And many people let this blow out of proportions and they let their past dictate what the present is and how the future will be. They let this past have a hold on their lives. For many, the voice of what happened in the past is even louder than the same voice of God that is calling them to a new beginning. And that voice of the past is used by Satan to accuse you To distort your identity and remind you of who you were or what you did. To fill you with guilt, hate, bitterness, doubt, insecurity, pain, fear. And yeah, maybe you suffer. Maybe you had a traumatic experience. Maybe you made a big mistake. Maybe you lost a loved one. Maybe they hurt you, they betrayed you. But that's just your past and your past shouldn't dictate what your present should be or your future. You have the power to change it in God. We have to focus on what's important so our vision will not be blurry no more. My kids, I have three kids. Two of them are right there. The other one is in in the kids church. And my kids are in a mentoring program. And one of the first lessons of the program is a simple, a simple formula. S plus R equals O. Situation plus response equals outcome. And you know why? Because 80% of the reasons why someone would succeed, succeed or fail are directly related to the way people respond to all of the life circumstances. It's true, bad things happen to all of us. It's true, we all make mistakes. Of course, people will hurt us. They deceive us. They mislead us. It hurts when when someone that we love dies. It doesn't feel good when we're betrayed or we're stabbed in the back. But you don't have to hold on to those events for life. You don't have to stay on the ground that that doesn't have to be your present and it doesn't have to be your future. Today you can decide to start over and have a different future with God. 
Paul writes this in Hebrews 12.1. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down. In Spanish he says, sacudete el polvo. It, uh, dust off all the, all the things that are weighting you down. So you can run. It's speaking about falling and getting up. Especially, he says, get rid of the scene that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We will do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. You know, it is time. It is time for you to get up. You can't keep rolling in the dust. You can't keep there in the ground. You can't keep rolling in the, in the mud pit with the pigs. It's time to run back home, run to God's arms. He's there waiting for you. You need to stop putting excuses and own your own mistakes if you made them. You need to forgive if you have to. You need to move on if you have to. You need to change. You need to do something. It is time for a new beginning. And it is enough waking up depressed every day. Tired. Discouraged. It is time for you to realize that every day you decide to live defeated. You will not get it back. You need to shake the dust and open your eyes and realize that you were created for more. You have to realize that to start over, you need to start by wanting to start over. Starting over begins by repenting, by forgiving, surrendering, getting up, changing, and acting. Now, you may be sitting there thinking, well... Right here, it's just you don't understand how hard my life is. I have my own personal storm cloud that follows me everywhere I go. If you feel like life is very hard, well, that's not new. Afflictions are not exclusive to you. In fact, Jesus said this in John 16, 33, you'll have trouble in the world. But cheer up, I defeated the world. In 1 Peter 4, 12, 13, says, Dear brothers, don't be surprised by the terrible things happening to you. The trouble that you're having has come to test you. So don't feel as, as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be joyful that you're taking part in Christ's sufferings. Then you will have even more joy when Christ returns in glory. And look what, what it says in 1 Peter 5, verse 8 to 10. It says, be alert and of sober mind. Because your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. Because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is enduring the same kind of sufferings. This means... These sufferings are not exclusive to you. We're all in this world. We live in a broken world. We deal with sickness, with death. We, live, we, we have to deal with all these things. They're not exclusive to you. But look what it says in verse 10. It says, And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, because no suffering is going to last forever. Amen? Him will restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Then you should not be surprised when life beats you down. But next time storms come to you, you must remember S plus R equals O. I have this situation. What do I want the outcome of this story to be? How should I respond so that the situation, instead of destroying me, will make me stronger and draw me closer to God. So most of our tests in our lives affect us in the long run, not because there are huge dramatic events, but it's because we let them. They affect us in the long term because we let them take control of our lives. We let them get a hold of our spirit. We let them control our present we let them affect their future. We, because maybe 
These experiences are long gone in the past, and we still hold on to them. We allow them to affect us not only when they happen, but for life. And the problem is that when life hits, many decide to stay in the dust, on the ground, like the caterpillar, crawling. And they say, poor me. My life is so hard. Nobody loves me. I will never be who I wanted to be. I will stay here crawling like a worm. Nobody cares about me. But what do you gain with regretting, with whining about your life, about your past? If you want to have a new beginning, you must get up, shake it off, and keep moving forward with God. Let me illustrate this. After being retired, Rocky Balboa <laughs> is challenged to return to the ring in Rocky IV. And his son believes that this is a bad idea and blames his father for his mediocre life. He tells him that he's tired of living overshadowed by his father's success. He tries to convince him not to fight. And this is what Rocky responds to his son. You, you know, living with you, it hasn't been easy. People see me, but they think of you. Now with all this going on, this is going to be worse than ever. It don't have to be. No, sure it does. Why? You got a lot going on, kid. Oh, well, my last name? That's the reason I got a decent job. That's the reason why people deal with me in the first place. Now I start to get a little ahead. I start to get a little something for myself. And this happens. Now I'm asking you as a favor not to go through with this, okay? This is only going to end up bad for you, and it's going to end up bad for me. You think I'm hurting you? Yeah, in a way you are. That's the last thing I ever wanted to do. I know that's not what you want to do, but that's just the way that it is. Don't you care what people think? Doesn't it bother you that, that people are making you out to be a joke and that I'm going to be included in that? Do you think that's right? Do you? You ain't going to believe this. But you used to fit right here. I'd hold you up and say to your mother, this kid's going to be the best kid in the world. This kid's going to be somebody better than anybody ever knew. And you grew up good and wonderful. It was great just watching you. Every day was like a privilege. Then the time come for you to be your own man and take on the world, and you did. But somewhere along the line, you changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame, like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, now go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that, and that ain't you. You're better than that. I'm always going to love you no matter what. No matter what happens. You're my son. You're my blood. You're the best thing in my life. But until you start believing in yourself, you ain't gonna have a life. Don't forget to visit your mother. <laughs> I can see God speaking like that. I will love you no matter what. But I wish you would believe in me and in yourself. I wish you could open your eyes and see in you what I created you to be. Because you could have so much more. Your life could be so much better. But what's your excuse for not getting up? 
What's our excuse for keep living the life that sometimes we hate so much? You know, for this boy, it was not the pain. It was not anguish. He was the son of a great fighter. He probably grew up with money, with all the privileges, with all the comforts, with all the opportunities. But for someone that he has decided to not give himself a chance, for someone that has made up their mind to stay the same, even good things can be an excuse. We get so comfortable. We celebrate past victories for so long that we forget that we need to go on to the next fight. We don't realize that we are stuck and holding on to the past. Even if it's good. And it happens to all of us. We refuse to change. Because he, he, he has worked for us, so why bother changing things? And we settle sometimes. We stop believing that there can be more. That God has more for us. It happens in ministry. It happens in church. It happens in our family. It happens in our jobs. We just settle. And we don't understand that they can, we can keep moving forward. And whether our past is good or our past is bad, in fact, it can become an excuse. So God probably wants to do something new for your future. But we need to think and think hard. What's our excuse to hold on to the pain, to depression, to bitterness? What's our excuse to being mediocre What's our excuse for not stopping addiction? What's our excuse for not improving our economic situation? What's our excuse to being a, for not being a better father, a, a, better, a better husband, a friend? For wasting our lives? For not having a deeper relationship with God? For having a shallow worship in our lives? What's our excuse to settle for a person that we don't even like? A reality that you detest and is consuming you, but you're doing nothing about it. What's our excuse? Or who are we blaming? Are you blaming someone? Are you blaming yourself? Are you blaming God? You got to shake the dust and open your eyes. You were created for great things. You were created for more. You just have to remember that to start over, you have to want to start over. You have to repent. You have to forgive. You have to surrender. You have to get up, change, and act. You have to be willing to go to that cocoon and let God change it over. Do it new, completely new. So there are two things you should do if you want a new beginning. Very simple. You need to identify what you should leave behind. And you need to follow the advice of God. That's it. You need to identify those things that are holding you back. Those things that need to change now. So let me ask you something. What areas of your life you need to take to the cocoon? So they can be reduced to nothing. And God can build something new. From scratch. And once you identify these things that need to be left behind and the things that need to be reborn in you, you must follow the advice of God. And this advice is forget the past, fix your eyes on me, and don't do it alone. God is telling you you need to forget the past, you need to fix your eyes on me, and you can't do this alone. It's important for us to forget the past, and we need to trust God that he will change our reality. That he's already, in fact, changing it. And sometimes we don't even realize it. In Isaiah 43, we read, and, and this, this Bible verse is amazing, and at home you can read the whole chapter, but it's talking about all the great things that God has did for Israel when they were uh, set free from captivity in, in Egypt. And after... Listing all the miracles and the amazing things that God did. 
This is what chapter 43, 18 to 19 says. Forget all that. It was great things, but he says, forget all that. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. Well, I am about to do something new. Look, I have already started. Don't you see it? I will make a road through the desert and I will create rivers in the dry land. You know, I think this can be a promise for you and me. Even if you had a great past, it's been a great run. God is telling you, forget about all that. I'm not done with you. I'm not done with Vive Church. I'm not done with La Viña in Costa Rica. I'm not done with my church in the world. I'm not done with your family. I'm not done with each one of you. I want to do something new, something greater. Don't you know what is the problem? The problem is not believing that is, and this unbelief empowers our past. Satan uses our past to distort our identity, our perception of who we are. Who God is. And we begin to believe these lies. And this is a problem, people. Because ignoring the truth just makes us slaves to a lie. I'm going to illustrate this real quick with a story. A little girl was sitting coloring on the table. And all of a sudden, she turns around and tells her dad, Daddy, how are children born? How was I created? How did mommy and, I, and you have me? <laughs> he immediately responded with the only obvious correct answer he knew at that moment and that we all use. Go ask your mom. <laughs> the girl went and asked her mother the same question. Mommy, how was I born? How was I created? How is it that daddy and you had me? The mother thought for a moment and she answered, well, my love. One night, Daddy and Mommy were walking through the countryside, and they cut a beautiful flower. We put it with much love in the pillow in her bed, and the next morning, there you were. <laughs> That's who you are. You're a beautiful flower that we cut with our own hands. The girl got so inspired and so excited about this that that same night, she went out to the garden and <laughs> cut a flower. She went to her bedside, and she put the flower with all the hopes in the world that next morning she was going to have a baby of her own. <laughs> well, next morning, for some reason, that flower wasn't there anymore. And instead, in that same place, there was a, I practice all week this word because, as you, as you can see, English is not my first language. <laughs> and I, that's why I'm reading. Cockroach. Cockroach? Cockroach. Cucaracha. <laughs> she looked at that thing. <laughs> and she said, you're so disgusting. You're so horrible. I hate the way you look. But I'm not going to kill you because you're my daughter. <laughs> you know why? Because ignoring the truth makes us slaves to a lie. What are the lies that you're believing? What are the lies that you're believing in your life that are, that are holding you back? That are changing and distort, distorting your perception of who God is. Who can you be? So God is telling you, you need to ignore the past. You need to forget those lies. And you need to fix your eyes on me. Philippians 3, 13, 14 says, No, beloved brothers, I have not succeeded, but I focus only on this. I forget the past, and I fix my eyes on what lies ahead. And so I move on, move on until I reach the end of the race to receive the heavenly prize to which God, He calls us through Christ Jesus. So you need to fix your eyes on God. He is the important one. He's not going to lie to you. He's going to always tell you the truth. And he's going to tell you the things that need to be changed in your life. And this means that you don't have to do this alone. If you read in the Bible, there's a very 
a specific example there, Joseph. Joseph had a really hard life. Randy mentioned some of Joseph's story last week. And Joseph had a really hard life. And when his life was a little better, he calls his oldest son, Manasseh. And he tells him in Genesis 41, 51, God made me forget all my anxieties. In all these passages, people, we find there's a common word, and it's forget. We cannot have a new beginning if we do not leave behind what happened in the past. So my question to you this morning is, are you willing to leave behind anything to have a new beginning? Remember that God always has something new for you. There are different ways in which God gives us a new beginning. Sometimes we will start something totally new. Sometimes we will have to restore something that we thought was destroyed. And sometimes we will simply take back something that we left undone. Regardless of the case, something is certain. We must identify what we should leave behind. We must follow God's advice that is telling us to forget the past, fix our eyes on him, and not do this alone. So would you stand up? And let me close with this question. And this is a question that you have to ask yourself. And you're the only person that can answer this. Are you ready for a new beginning? Everything new that God has for us requires that we do our part. That we have the determination not to stay where we are. We have to decide taking our lives to the cocoon as many times as we need to. So, why don't we ask God to show us the things that we need to leave behind. As we worship with this song, just let God remind you of who He is. Thanks again for joining us today. We're hoping that this message brought you to life. If you have any prayer requests or if you'd like to connect with our church family, you can email us at info at vibechurch.com or you can fill out the contact card section in our app. We're looking forward to hearing about all the ways that God is moving in your life. And until next time, go bring somebody to life.